Chuck Berry's move. <laughs> Chuck Berry always looked at his watch. I, you know, I, I kind of launched into that Chuck Berry song. You know, uh, a lot of people have their different Chuck Berry stories, and there was kind of a cliche, you know, I don't want to meet Chuck Berry, which could apply to any of your heroes. You know, you don't want to have this idyllic thing destroyed by meeting somebody that you just were, you know, idolized forever. Uh, the Dell Lords opened for Chuck Berry uh, at the Ritz, when, at their second location. And uh, it, I really enjoyed, like, reading my other bandmates' stories of the, yeah. the, the gig, you know? <laughs> and Scott went into this long thing about, you know, how Chuck came into our dressing room and asked to use the sink. And, you know, he, and Ch Scott had, like, a Canadian import version of his... Sun 45s or, or, or chest 45s, you know, the earliest ones. And then Frank told the story of the, uh, you know, Chuck Berry, when he's on stage, he's contracted for 50 minutes. And that means 50 minutes on stage. So that night, you know, Chuck Berry came out and got on stage and opened his guitar case. And I don't know how many of you play guitar, but, you know, in the guitar case, there's this little pocket sort of under the neck, where, like, around here. And so Chuck Berry had, in his guitar case, in that pocket, a wadded-up guitar chord. <laughs> and so the place is packed, you know, and Chuck Berry, Frank, timed it as three minutes, um, <laughs> but I wore a watch, <laughs> Frank didn't. It was more like five minutes. He took five minutes of his whole show, you know, to, to unravel his cord. Then he went on and, you know, like the, there, there are many times where, you know, there's the whole Chuck Berry story of that he wouldn't travel with a band right. and, you know, a lot of crappy people played and backed him up, but there were a lot of times, like in New York, when Chuck Berry was booked for a gig, the, the best guys, you know, it was usually the Uptown Horns guys yeah. Right. Yeah. were booked to be the band. Right. And the, the place, Studio yeah. Instrument Rentals, the Equipment Rentals, mm -hmm. they kept for years two dual showman reverbs. <laughs> you know, like, they, no one rented them, ever except for Chuck Berry. But when Chuck Berry came to New York and played a gig, and whatever place called, said, we need the amp for Chuck Berry, he said, yes, absolutely, we have them. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but then there was another story, the early, when I first moved here, I went to see Chuck Berry at the other Ritz, the 11th Street Ritz, which is now the Webster Hall. Every kind of, uh, but every rock and roller in America that was in town that night was there. I was standing right behind George Thurgood. Like, everybody was there. And he was playing a great gig. And this was just after, you know, when you moved to New York, you learned that your rock and roll news is dated. You know, it's like, Rolling Stone <laughs> takes three months to come out. <laughs> but the whole story of, of Chuck Berry punching out Keith Richard on stage, that had already, that was already known to the rock and rollers. You know, so about this, this feud, you know, with uh, Chuck Berry and Keith Richard. So in 1981, and so I'm at the gig and all of a sudden, like halfway through the gig, there's like, a, like a, the, the, some guy just came in with a tweed guitar case, you know, this is before reissues. <laughs> Something, some rock star is here, you know. And so, uh, and then, but before the rock star came out, Chuck Berry did another one of his grand things, which was, you know, the Ritz, he gets off stage, 
and it goes like, there's a lot more motherfuckers in here than you say. <laughs> and I'll be needing $5,000 more in the bag now. And, and you know, and so, and my friends are the promoters, and I heard about all this stuff. <laughs> So that, that was the subtext of the show. But then, okay, there's a rock star. There's an English rock star. And I know it's like, and so the English rock star comes out, and Chuck Berry introduces, I'd like you all to meet my very good friend, Keith Richards. <laughs> and the whole place, the only guy in the whole place that didn't know <laughs> that it was actually Ron Wood <laughs> was Chuck Berry. <laughs> <laughs> Ron Wood's like... <laughs> but, okay, so back to the whole, like, you don't want to meet your heroes thing. <laughs> I'm up there in the, you know, with the Del Arts thing, and I have, not only have I seen Chuck's movie, but I've read his book. Have you guys read his book? If you can do anything for me, just, you really ought to read his book. It's like his book and the Miles Davis bio, those are, you, you can, these are like full on, bathroom books, meaning that you can open to any page and there will be action. In Chuck's book, he starts with the foreword and he says, you know, okay, I got this deal to have a, to write a book. And they told me that this would be the advance and then they would take this much money out for the guy to write the book. He was like, I can write the book. And he was, I went out and got a computer, and now I wrote the book. <laughs> it was a word processor back then. The book details the three biggest things in his life. Jail, <laughs> cars, and Go ahead. blonde women. <laughs> he starts with this thing, you know, like we all as kids had to, like, go to work with dad day, you know, like, you, 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 you did it, right? You went to work with dad. So he went, his, when his dad was a handyman in St. Louis, and <laughs> he took, his dad took him to the house that he was working at, and that's when Chuck saw the blonde woman. And, and he just talks about it kind of in a way like a speed freak you know, <laughs> who's looking at a pile of meth. <laughs> it's really a tremendous book, and you, you owe it to yourself to get the book. Uh, but when it, So when I met Chuck, you know, I went to college, I attended college. You know, <laughs> and one of the things I learned there was a proper handshake. So I gave Chuck the proper handshake. The man's hands was like a first baseman's man. You know, this this thing. Like for him, for us, that's a stretch. Like you saw me, I had to get in the right spot and try to hit the, for him that is nothing to make his pinky go all the way over there. So I you know, I shook the man's hand and then I knew I'm not gonna try to talk to him about some fucking record that he made or anything. And I was like, Yeah, you know, how about those cars? You know, I, I, I saw the thing in the movie, you know, and he's like, I saw the, where the guy offered you money for the, you know, what you have. It was a 67 Eldorado, and he was like, mm -mm. it was Chuck Berry's 67. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was a bunch of Chuck Berry stories and some <laughs> Chuck Berry demonstrations. <laughs> oh my goodness. Right on, Josephine. Yeah. I, I just, 
you know, I've been dying to talk to somebody about Chuck Berry, and I just didn't want to fucking type it on Facebook. So <laughs> thank you so much. Oh. <laughs>